We spent New Year's in Old San Juan, Puerto Rico, and one of the most beautiful scenes was at El Moro. At sunset, people gathered around, they were flying kites. It was a beautiful scene, and I tried to capture it with my Fuji X-T3 there, and unfortunately, it was a scene that was kind of impossible to capture with stills because things didn't line up. I wanted to capture the elements of the beautiful architecture of the El Moro Fortress, the people who were gathered there spending family time together, as well as all the kids who were flying kites. And that's kind of easy to do in video where you can take separate clips and stitch them together. But with stills, uh, just things didn't line up in a way that wasn't cluttered. So what I decided to do was to composite it together and try to tell a story visually by combining multiple stills to capture kind of what I experienced rather than exactly what the camera saw. And I know some people are fundamentally against compositing in photos. I'm not. There are lots of people who paint this scene, and I, I think it's okay if you have an artistic vision as long as you don't misrepresent it. I'll start out in Lightroom here, and I isolated three separate pictures. The first is the picture that I just about went with. I liked the way this kind of lined up. I shot at a fairly high f-stop to get the starburst of the sun here. I have the silhouette of the very famous fortress here. And then we have a person here in the foreground doing something, kind of experiencing the sunset, and I wanted to share that. There's also a plane that I happen to catch flying past because there's an airport nearby, so there's lots of planes going. It's all kind of part of the experience. But as I looked at this picture, I thought, that's not quite what I want to show because this guy... He's not a very good silhouette. He's not looking towards the sun. I, I took a lot of pictures of the people in silhouettes here, knowing that I would have the option to easily combine them later. So you can see all these people are also in silhouette at a wider angle. And I really like this couple here who's kind of embracing and they're looking towards the sun. So I thought I'll take them and I'll replace the guy in his helmet here with the nice couple. And I also thought, well, okay, I have a plane going here, but what I really thought defined this moment for me more was the kite. So why don't I take a frame that has a kite in it and replace the plane? And it's shockingly easy to do with Photoshop. It will really take only a few clicks. So the first thing I'm gonna do I'll click the first one, shift click the last one, right click, and then select edit in and open as layers in Photoshop. So here we are in Photoshop. Lightroom has opened up all three photos as separate layers. I can show or hide each of the layers by clicking the little eye icon here. And if I hide the top two layers, you can see the bottom layer, which is going to be my main layer. I'm going to start with this and remove the elements that I don't want, which is super easy to do in Photoshop. So let me just zoom in here. I use the lasso key to just circle the subjects that I want to remove. You can select the lasso by pressing the L key and then edit, fill, shift F5, select content aware. So bam, so what I don't want, there were some just factory towers here and it duplicated them, which isn't what I wanted to do. And I usually just go back and re-remove them. Okay, so what we have left is the true scene without a person in it. I'm also going to remove this plane while we're at it so we can replace it later with a kite. Great, so now we have a clean image and let's select the next layer up. I'm going to borrow a couple of people from this scene. Let's find the couple that I wanted to borrow. So there they are. I'll use the lasso tool and circle them. And now what I can do is hit the layer mask button here. And the layer mask is going to create this black and white mask here. And just the part that I selected is outlined in white. That's represented by that little dot there. Everything else in the image is hidden. You can see I just did a really sloppy select on them, but it's good enough. So now I'll switch over to the move tool here by pressing V on the keyboard. And I'm going to drag this into position. Let's see, our guy was about here. I'll just line up the wall in their photo, zoom in to make sure that's accurate. And you can see it looks terrible, right? What we want to do is to hide the parts that don't match up, to use only the dark part of this image. And that's really easy. I'm going to select the layer with the photo here, and then let's select Darken. Darken changes how Photoshop combines these different layers. So with Darken, the image will only make things darker. It won't overwrite any part of the background that's brighter. And the way I've done it now, there's not really any difference. You didn't see anything obvious, but wait. I'm going to adjust the levels on this layer now. So I'm going to press Control L to adjust the levels. And now what I can do is drag the white point, which tells Photoshop which part of the image is the brightest. And I'm just going to drag it down here until most of the background image disappears. 
And so now you can see it's amplifying the noise some. I'm just going to drag the black side down. So what I've done is just adjusted the blacks and the whites until everything pretty much disappears and it just blends naturally. There we go. All traces of the foreground are gone and all we see are a nice couple there. So now our lovely couple has replaced the lonely guy. Let's introduce our third picture here with the kite. The one part of this image that I wanted was that kite that's sailing in the air there. So I'll return to the lasso tool here. I can press L. I'll just roughly circle it. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'll turn on the layer mask and then switch to the move tool by pressing V on the keyboard. Then I'll drag this into position. I'm holding down the space bar to use the hand tool so I can drag it. And then let's drag it roughly where we want it to be. Let's make it a little bigger. I'll select that layer and then press Control T to transform it. It's transforming the whole layer here, so it's a little bit bigger than it needs to be. Okay, so I'm making the kite just big enough that it's an obvious visible element and it doesn't completely disappear. There we go. And then we're going to repeat what we did in the last step to hide the background on that image, I'm going to switch the layer masking to darken so that only the darkest parts of the image show through. Then I'm going to press Control L to adjust the levels of it. So by making the white point lower, I am causing it to the darken tool to discard all of the brightest parts of the image. And then by raising the black point, I'm causing the rest of the kite to go to completely black. And you can see it makes it super easy for me to make that kite look natural and really I can position it anywhere I want for composition. And I think working with elements like this freely in a composite is a fantastic way to study composition. And as I look at this, what I'm looking for is a balance between the four main subjects in this photo, the tower here, the starburst, the people, and the kite. And so the people here are balancing the tower and I want the kite to balance the starburst. So it's all kind of geometric. So I'm going to kind of place it where it just feels right to me. And you know what, now that I look at it again, maybe I want to move those people over a little bit more. But it's so nice because I can just freely move them wherever I want to. My one last step is just to crop it down. There you have it, a super easy trick for quickly using silhouettes from multiple different photos to tell a visual story. You can take a silhouette from any photo and drop it into just about any other photo. So if you see a V of geese flying through the sky and you think you might wanna use that later, even if the scene isn't perfect, then grab a photo of those geese because you can always drop it later. Even though it's a composite, it's okay. It's okay to create a unique artistic vision, even if it's not exactly what the camera captured. We can be creative sometimes, right? If you wanna learn, more about using Photoshop and Lightroom. We have video training. Our video books each have more than 10 hours of video. Our Photoshop book here, it's a full book with 10 hours of video in the Lightroom book. Again, a book with 14 hours of video that each includes sample files, actual projects that you can work through step by step. So you get the hands-on experience that you need to apply it to your own work. And I'm gonna mention that we now have our Taking and Selling Professional Portraits video training series for sale. These are all available at Northrop.photo. You can use the coupon code YouTube for 10% off. And if you don't yet have Lightroom or Photoshop, head to sdp.io slash Adobe deal, where you can get a, a free trial that leads into a very low monthly payment for both tools, which are like key tools for just about every professional and amateur photographer out there. Thanks so much. Bye.